And we are back at the Study and Go Abroad Fair. And Eugene, you want to take it away and introduce our next guest? Sure. So hi, everyone. I brought Elena with me. She is from the University of Highlands and Islands. And as the name indicates, she's from Scotland. So Elena, could you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Elena. Um, and as Eugene says, um, I am from the University of the Highlands and Islands in Scotland. And it is my job to support any students from Canada that might want to come over and study at our university. Great, that's lovely. So Elena, um, I'm interested. Have, did you graduate from UHI? No, actually. Um, so I studied in Scotland with my uh, bachelor's and master's degree, um, but not at the University of Highlands and Islands. So it's really exciting to kind of be there and working there and getting to learn more about the university. Mm. Um, very nice. The reason that I'm very excited to uh, to have this guest here right now is that my last name is McDougal, and I've been uh, waiting for this conversation my entire life. My family has been preparing me for it. Can you tell me a bit about Scotland? I've never been there before, and, uh, and uh, you know, what's it like? Um, I love it. Obviously, I'm biased, um, but it is a beautiful country. Um, it's a great place for everybody, but particularly for young people. Um, you can really easily get around the country and see and explore so much of it in mm -hmm. a relatively short space of time. Mm -hmm. um, the people are notoriously warm and welcoming. And the food is good okay. and just generally... It's just kind of a great, a great place to be. And whether you're staying there or whether you're a tourist, um, you're all welcome. That's lovely. Uh, where were you born in Scotland? Um, so I was actually born in the Highlands. I was born in Inverness. Um, so if you have watched Outlander, you might be familiar. Um, and also any, uh, any fans of uh, mythology, that is where Loch Ness is based. So if anybody's interested in studying, you can come over and try and find the monster while you do it. I am actually a fan of Outlander. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, did you ever try to go up to the the um, the Stonehenge and touch the stones? Um, the standing stones? Um, no, I haven't. But um, they are actually kind of all over um, Scotland as well. So I have been to some standing stones um, in other parts of Scotland. Um, but I, I'm still here. I'm still with us. So uh, no time <laughs> travel for me. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, tell us. So Scotland, what kind of activities do you usually do? Because uh, there's a lot of beautiful nature, the highlands. I just want to know if you go out exploring regularly with your friends. Yeah, so this is really one of the benefits of um, studying. So we have campuses across um, the highlands and islands in Scotland. Um, and it really is one of the benefits of studying with us is having such easy access to the outdoors. Um, so like hiking, skiing, um, wild swimming is really popular in Scotland now. I think it's kind of something that really came up during uh, during COVID. Did you say wild swimming? Wild swimming, Okay, yeah. I saw an article about this in the New York Times. It was something like, <laughs> um, like very wealthy families own large swaths of land, and so people are protesting by going and swimming <laughs> like in these random lakes. Is that in Scotland or is that elsewhere in the UK? Um, I've not heard of that, but um, it, sounds, it sounds probably something that happens all over the UK, but yeah. um, a lot of... Um, in Scotland, a lot of kind of land is kind of accessible for for the general public. Good. So, yeah, I've I've not broken any laws doing it. Yet. Oh, really? I don't believe you at <laughs> all when you say that. There's always there's always time. It's good to have ambitions. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, in terms of that free spirited attitude to go and uh, illegally swim in here, there is that representative of the Scottish nature. Like, what are Scottish people like um, when you're just walking around the city? What's that like? Um, gosh. It, it's so hard to kind of like evaluate your own people, isn't okay, it? Okay, fair um, enough, fair enough. I think, as I said, we are a, generally a very welcoming people. Um, very dry sense of humor. Okay, like, good. Sarcasm, like just... Was train spotting from Scotland? Yes, it okay. was. Yeah, okay. there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite like a, a dry wit. Sure. And we are a, a nation of storytellers as well. Ah, yeah. Interesting you say that. I think my uncle was really inspired to learn the accordion because Aww. of Scotland. Does that sound about right? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. Um, what's, mean, what sort of music? I mean, does music play a big part of... Uh... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, and we have a couple of music um, courses as well. And Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Um, so, 
we have a kind of an Muse music course. We also have kind of a popular music course as well. Um, and I think, yeah, music is something that's very, it was very important to the Scottish culture. Um, obviously, you'd probably be familiar with the bagpipes and some people just think it sounds like noise. <laughs> but for us, it's quite moving. You know, a lot of the time at a wedding, a bride will be kind of piped out of the, the hall. Um, so yeah, music is very important um, and it plays quite a big part in our social kind of activities as well. Here's what I would say. I think we should hear some of that. I'm a, you know, I'm a Scotsman, right? I'm a little biased, but Riley, uh, back home at CIUT, you should look up Amazing Grace on the bagpipes and we should put a, <laughs> put a bit of that on air right now. Um, but to send it back to Eugene, what else can we ask this lovely Scottish lady? I do have some questions about food. Mm -hmm. I've... Three years ago, I've come across this YouTube video where a man wearing this full Scottish attire. Okay. He... I don't know where this is going, and I don't think I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he, well, he carries this tray of haggis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he gives a whole elaborate speech and then ends it with, let her have haggis. And then he splits it mm -hmm. and it just pours out. I want to know more about that ritual. Yeah. No, this is um this is genuinely is something that we do. It's not some like weird internet thing that you've seen. Um, so um, basically, so the, our national poet in Scotland is Robert Burns. Um, so if you're familiar with "Old Lang Syne," the song that's typically sung um, on New Year, that is something that he wrote. Oh. Um. So to celebrate his birthday every year, I mean he's long dead, but to celebrate his birthday every year, we host uh, burn suppers. So it might be, you know, universities will do it, um, or it might just be something that you do with your friends and family. Um, and at a kind of proper formal burn supper, the haggis will be brought in on a tray, just as you saw, um, and the bagpipes will play as it happens. And there is somebody whose kind of role at the supper is to do the the toast to the haggis um, and the very last part of it is him basically stabbing the haggis and um, splitting it open um, and that just kind of signifies that it's time for the meal to be served. Oh and do people come and take a piece of haggis? No it typically is kind of taken away and then we serve it up so the traditional meal is haggis neeps and tatties which is haggis, turnips um, and potatoes, smashed potatoes. Oh yeah. What is haggis exactly made of? I'm not sure if I should tell you because you'll never try it if I do. Um, but essentially, um, it is it's basically the insides of the sheep. Oh, it's um, okay. And typically, in, tr traditionally, it used to be served um, inside the sheep's stomach. Oh. Um, it, that is obviously not the case anymore. Um, but there's also things like oats and like herbs and spices. So it tastes significantly better than it sounds. I'm a very fussy eater and I love it. <laughs> On that note, everybody, we should go to Scotland. Let's enjoy some haggis. Do I understand they serve it for every single meal, right? You can't Absolutely, avoid it. Yeah, breakfast, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> well, here you're listening to CIUT 89.5 FM. We're going to go to a music break. And uh, thank you so much for listening to our broadcast from the Study and Go Abroad Fair. This is CIUT.